At the Sepang MotoGP test, Marc Marquez delivered yet another powerful message with his extremely competitive race simulations. Although he still needs to gain more pace across a lap to compete with riders like Francesco Bagnaia, Jorge Martin, and teammate Alex Marquez, the eight-time world champion has already gotten quite good at adjusting to his Desmo Sadici GP23 bike. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Step-by-step step was the key point, Marquez stated on the third day of the Sepang test. We worked a lot during these three days, he remarked. I was just working in the garage. I never felt anxious or panicked. Even though I knew I frequently finished in P19 or 20th place on the first and second days, I maintained my composure. I was only attempting to comprehend the bike. It was a little easier in Valencia, and since this is one of the circuits I have scheduled in for myself, it was somewhat harder here as well. I've always been slow here for some reason, but other than that, the progression was decent. I completed the long run, which was a 10-lap sprint race simulation. Yesterday, day two, at a decent speed. However, today's biggest accomplishment was realizing how to benefit from the new tire, since I was faster on both of them. This held great significance. I'm still not close to the best guys because a half second is not very long. It's not horrible, though. I completed another sprint simulation, which was beneficial, but you must be aware of the times that other people and you completed the tests. For instance, some people used hotter track temperatures, which makes you move more slowly. However, the fact that I felt happy is what matters most to me. Days two and three of Marquez's sprint race simulations were when he really showed off. The original plan called for doing the first simulation on the second day rather than the third. But Marquez pressured Grassini to alter their course and threatened to do so until they adopted his techniques. Sprint race simulation was not on the agenda, but I wanted to do it to try and experiment with the bike, Marquez continued. Strive to switch lines, be more liberated and comprehend the gas. You need laps to be more fluid. Even though I was exhausted, I still wanted to finish it, even if it took longer. However, it is the path to progress. You will never get better if you stay in the garage. Laps are necessary. I'll be adamant about carrying on with the development going forward. It won't be simple, and it's true that I reached my limit with Honda after just two runs. It takes longer to understand this bike. According to Simon Crawford, Marc Marquez was sandbagging at the preseason Sepang test. Compared to his performance in Valencia the previous year, where he stole the show, the Grassini Ducati rider was significantly more reserved during the three-day test. However, there are hints from the paddock that suggest Marquez may not have been using his new bike to its full ability. While watching Marquez in Sepang, former racer and current MotoGP broadcaster Crafar said, he's in a satellite team, so he doesn't have any parts to test. He's learning about the GP23 though. He's constantly adjusting the bike. It is rising and falling. The purpose of testing is to facilitate his exploration. He's beginning to discover his interests. I've noticed that the riders at the top will often start off with a soft rear and finish the course quickly. When do they run next? They've extracted so much life from it that they're now in their 58s instead of their 57s. Afterward, in the 59s, Mark has been maintaining his time in the 58s instead of executing time attacks. He's running there, consistently doing so. Thus, it seems to me that he is testing. The only time Mark, the Mark we know, gets aggressive while I'm going fast is when I'm braking. He appears quite impressive. He's going to be the hardest Ducati rider this year in the braking zone, in my opinion. Jorge Martin and Enea Bastianini have threatened Peco in the past. However, I believe Ducati will have a new champion in the braking department. He has been doing the rest with ease and reliability. He is regularly going wide on the last turn. That is not the behavior of an eight-time world champion. That seems to be a little bit of sandbagging to me, continuously wasting time in one area. He is aware that he can simply go, boom, and the time will pass when he wants it to, allowing him to finish the remaining pieces. With Frankie Carcetti, he is experimenting with everything, including bike positions and geometry adjustments. Marquez completed 10 circuits in one minute, 59.059 seconds on average. Mark and his sibling Alex both recorded timings that were quicker than Alex's winning time from the Sepang Sprint event the previous season. Jorge Martin of Pramac has already stated that Marquez will compete for the win in the season opening Qatar MotoGP, which takes place on March 8th to 10. Aprilia has selected rider Enea Bastianini as one of their targets. With all but two riders approaching the latter months of their current contracts, the MotoGP silly season has the potential to be among the wildest in recent memory.
In order to get the greatest possible agreement for 2025 and beyond, manufacturers and riders will be vying for position, with important riders like Marc Marquez and Fabio Quartararo perhaps having a ripple effect throughout the grid. After a year marred by injuries, Bastianini must fight to maintain his factory Ducati seat, but he may also draw praise from other quarters. I believe it's common knowledge that I enjoy riding with Enea, Massimo Rivola, CEO of Aprilia, said. His manager, Carlo Perna, is well aware that I was also instrumental in helping him attain specific outcomes in the Ducati negotiations. We would definitely benefit from having an Italian rider. It's too early to tell if it will be Enea or someone else. On the second day of the preseason Sipong test, Bastianini set a new record. This year, Aprilia will continue to run veteran duo Alish Espergro and Maverick Vinales. The newly renamed Trackhouse team will consist of Miguel Oliveira and Raul Fernandez. Perhaps we ought to confirm our two riders again, Rivola conceded. It's a great sounding board to win with Italian riders and bikes. Having said that, I am really content with the two. Actually, more accurately, the four riders we have. The rider market will be extremely volatile for the first three months, but we'll handle it calmly. Vinales of Aprilia gave the Italian manufacturer an early boost by being the fastest in the postseason Valencia test. It looks like a deal to prolong Ducati and VR46's collaboration is close to completion. It has now been verified by Ducati executives that VR46 informed them of their plan to remain in place. The MotoGP team of Valentino Rossi has an agreement with Ducati that ends at the end of this season, but they can continue to work together until the end of 2026. Talks about taking up VR46 have been held by Yamaha, who are evidently intimately associated with Rossi and KTM, who are eager to increase their position in MotoGP. However, factory team manager Davide Tardozzi stated, it's something in discussion. VR46 informed us that they wanted to close as soon as possible. In all honesty, Gigi and Valentino Rossi's representatives are in charge of it. We would like to keep doing this for another two years. Gigi, general manager of Ducati Course, continued, we are working on it as well. It will undoubtedly not be simple because this team is of interest to some manufacturers. But we're working on it and we'll see. Pablo Nieto, the manager of the VR46 squad, had stated, we are happy now with Ducati. This is evident. It is also true, though, that other manufacturers are trying to find us. This indicates that we are performing exceptionally well, which is fantastic for us. However, right now, we intend to stick with Ducati. My direction is to continue with Ducati, stated Uccio Salucci. Signing the contract before Qatar is my dream because I want to be quiet and make sure I'm ready for this year. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.